Throughout his life, one thing that meant most to Jesus was people. He sacrificed everything to lead them to his Father and to love them no matter what. Jesus loved everyone. That was what made him so different and so necessary to our lives. I'm John Osteen, pastor of Lakewood Church in Houston, Texas. Through many years of ministry, we've discovered that there's no greater joy than loving and caring for God's people. That means you, no matter your denomination, race, or walk of life. Your dreams and desires are important to God, and that makes them important to us. We've dedicated our lives to bringing the compassion of Jesus to everyone. By building faith in God through the teaching and preaching of His Word, Lakewood helps those who have been overcome to be overcomers. We're interested in God's very best for you. So please, just as you are, join the people of Lakewood for the next hour as we open God's Word together. At Lakewood Church, we're here for you. Now Jesus said, in the world you shall have tribulation, frustration, disturbance, and heartache, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. One translation says, I have conquered it for you, I have deprived it of its power to harm you. Oh, thank God, he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And we're glad to be able to teach you the Word of God. Good, could I have a good amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. That's right. Uh, you know, there's a scripture here that's so good in 1 Corinthians. Uh, the ninth chapter says, In a race, everyone runs, but only one person gets first prize. So run your race to win. To win the contest, you must deny yourself many things that would keep you from doing your best. You know, when athletes train in a race, to, to run a race, they have to deny themselves a lot of things. They have to deny themselves a lot of pizzas and hamburgers or a, a boxer. They've got to, except George Foreman now, he's a different story. But they have to deny themselves some things. And so that's what we have to do as Christians. We're running that race to win to yes. get to heaven, and we will. We'll just keep on running and running and running, but sometimes we have to lay aside some things that would slow us down. You know, like little things like bitterness and jealousy, unforgiveness and things like that. Anything that would hold you down or weight you down from running your race the best way, then lay aside and we'll win and someday we'll all be in heaven together and all the people said, amen and amen. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you, Dodie, that's good. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, we are so happy that you have tuned in today to be a part of this program. We want to we do you good. We're going to feed you, not beat you. We're not going to criticize you. We're going to lift you up. Everybody say it together. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess, my mind is alert, my heart is receptive, I will never be the same. I am about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the Word of God. I will never be the same. Never, never, never. I'll never be the same in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Television audience, we're reading from the book of John, chapter 16. This is Jesus talking. But now I go my way to him that sent me. He's going back to heaven. And none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient, profitable, necessary for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come. The Holy Ghost will not come. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Could I have an amen? amen. Now look up here and listen to these words from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. You don't need to turn there. Follow after love. 
and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. For he that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him. Howbeit in the Spirit he speaks mystery. Verse 4, he that speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself. Verse 5, I would that you all spoke in tongues. And then verse 14, for if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. Now, you know, these are wonderful facts about the Holy Ghost, the blessings of the baptism in the Holy Ghost. You know, the Lord impressed me this week. You need to, you need to alert the congregation in Lakewood Church and on television how wonderful it is to have the baptism in the Holy Ghost and fire. Oh, we forget sometimes what it was like to live without the wonderful experience that Jesus calls the baptism in the Holy Ghost and fire. He talks about that. And we all need that power. You shall receive power. Everybody shout power. power. Shout it out loud. Power. Listen, you have supernatural enemies. You need supernatural power. And he said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Now, I know that every born-again person has the Holy Ghost. That is, the Holy Ghost has regenerated your spirit or given you a new birth. But the Bible clearly states that after we are born again, we are made worthy then to receive that divine anointing of the Holy Ghost called the baptism in the Holy Ghost and fire. And when you receive that, you are anointed in a special way. And I'll tell you folks, we need that anointing. I said we need that anointing. We need to realize being born again will take us to heaven, but we're not in heaven. We need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire as born again believers. Listen to this scripture. How much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? No sinner asks God for the Holy Ghost. After you believe, you receive the Holy Spirit, a promise. See, that is... Uh, the fact is, God's gift to the sinner is eternal life. God's gift to the saint is the baptism in the Holy Ghost. And what a wonderful thing, you know, uh, when, you, when you receive the baptism in the Holy Ghost, you know, you begin to speak in a heavenly language. The Bible says in, in Isaiah, with stammering lip and another tongue, when you get, speak to this people, this is the rest and this is the refreshing talking about the baptism in the Holy Ghost because that's quoted over there in the book of Corinthians. So this is the rest. This is the refreshing. I know as a denominational preacher, I happen to be Southern Baptist. I'm still ordained Southern Baptist. I'm neither bragging nor complaining. Everybody say, God bless the Baptist. God bless the Baptist. Thank God for every denomination. Every person in every, every denomination, I'll tell you, we ought never to criticize anybody in any church. Thank God we may be in different denominations, but we're in the same family. Amen. We're in the same family. And I remember that I had such a hunger. I realized something was missing in my life, and here I've been preaching for years. And I know many preachers watch, you know, all kind of preachers watch our, our, our telecast I, from all denominations. And, and you may be having the same experience. What's missing in my life and, and in our congregation? They'd come down the aisle, rededicate their life, come down the aisle, rededicate their life, and so forth, you know. And, uh, and, and so we all knew something was missing. And, and, but we had been taught that there was nothing else to have. But I got such a thirst. Jesus said, if anybody thirst, let him come unto me and drink, and out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And, and so I, I, I began to search, as most of you here know, for the baptism in the Holy Ghost. So I began to search, seek God. I didn't know it was a baptism. Then I found in the Bible about the baptism in the Holy Ghost. And, and I began to search. I said, Jesus, I, it says here, you will baptize me in the Holy Ghost in fire. 
Well, in the search, you see, I suddenly began to pray and speak in another language, a heavenly language coming right out of my belly. Out of the belly shall flow rivers of living water. Now, there were scriptures that kept me from the baptism for years uh, because I did not realize there are two kinds of speaking in tongues. Now, you people watching my television, I want you to listen very carefully because this will help you. There are two kinds of speaking in tongues. One is the gift of tongues. If that gift of tongues speaks out to men, somebody understands it and gives an interpretation. And... Uh, the, the other kind is the prayer language that does not go out to men, but goes up to God. And in that prayer language, we can communicate with God in a supernatural way. Oh, I'm so glad I have a supernatural way of communicating with God. I, I remember... I used to be afraid of people that spoke in tongues. It made me nervous. And uh, I remember how this hunger was so great in my heart. Somebody said, well, Brother Osteen, I believe I've got all God I'm supposed to have. Well, bless you. Just stay with what you got. Thank God you got something. I'm not going to argue with anybody. I'm just going to deal with the hungry people, the thirsty people. But I remember I was so thirsty, I was so hungry for God. I didn't know there wasn't any charismatics back there to help me. No books that I could read to help me. I, I was afraid of the Pentecostals, and, and I wouldn't go uh, around them. But uh, I, I was seeking God. And I remember I went up to Blytheville, Arkansas, to preach a revival in the First Baptist Church of Blytheville, Arkansas. I don't know whether anybody watching lives in Blytheville, Arkansas, but years ago I preached a revival in that First Baptist Church. And I decided that I would take the train because I could pray. And I, I, I took a sleeper train and I prayed all night. I'm not bragging, I'm just telling you. I just sought God all night. I prayed out loud. I cried out to God. I, I, I wept before the Lord. I cried and I prayed and I said, Oh God, I tell you, I'm so tired of being dry and powerless. Oh God, there must be something else, more reality than I've got. And I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. And so I went on to preach that, that revival. And there was a little Assembly of God church. Everybody say, God bless the Assembly of God. They were having a revival uh, down a few blocks, and I'd get out early out of the Baptist church preaching, and I'd run down the rich street and get in their revival. <laughs> Every morning when I preached, I'd leave and run down there and listen to them. After night, you know, they go longer than Baptists, and so I got through preaching in the Baptist church. I'd run down there. I was hungry, 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 and they were so good to me. Similarly of God, people helped me so much. And, uh, but anyway, I, I didn't receive them. And then I, we, I had to come back on a train through Little Rock. And so I decided to take a layover. And, and I was going to go. Now, I don't know whether I'll tell this or not, but I think I will. I mean, if you want to hear it, shout amen. amen. I said, I'm going to get in Little, Little Rock, and I'm going to find the biggest Holy Ghost Pentecostal church I can find. And I'm going to visit incognito. Nobody will know me from Adam. And so I, I, I discovered that there was a huge Assembly of God church there. And so I got there early. And I was sitting there. Nobody knew me. Nobody knew my name. I didn't know. Nobody would have recognized me if they told me my name. And anyway, I was sitting there. And all these people began to gather in, gather in. And several hundred people, you know, came in there. And, and all at once, uh, the preacher got up and said, it's time to go out now and, and uh, go to your group. And I didn't know where they were going. I thought, well, I'm going to act like they act. So they won't know I'm a prospect. And so I, I just followed one of the groups out. And uh, they were going to prayer meetings to, before the service. They'd all go to different rooms to pray. And I got in one of those little rooms. And they were all in there on their knees, lifting their hands, praying. Man, you talk about being uncomfortable and out of place. Here I am, an ordained Southern Baptist preacher, and a bunch of people like that locked in that little room there. 
with the door closed, not locked, but the door closed. And all the others prayed, well, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to act like I'm one of them. And so I, I didn't say a word to anybody. You know, I just, I just kind of bowed down and I, I, I wouldn't lift my hands and get about as high as a little dog, dog's ears, you know, about like that, you know. But I felt strange lifting my hands. And so, I, but I never will forget, I had an experience there. I looked, there were people all around me praying, and there was a woman. When I get to heaven, I want to find out who she is. But she had her hands lifted up, her face tilted toward God, tears streaming down her face. She was worshiping God in a dimension that I never had seen. I said, oh, God, as I watched her, I said, God, what is this? What is this? Where does this come from? I don't have it. I'm a minister. I'm a pastor. Lord, what is this wonderful power, this glow, this glory, this holy abandonment, this unashamed feeling that she has, and just, just giving herself to you with tears, it impressed me greatly. Oh, what a difference it makes to have the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Amen. That was a great influence in my life. I was determined I wanted what that woman had. I wanted to be able to lift my hands. I wanted to be able to pray in tongues like she was praying. I wanted to weep before the Lord like she was weeping. I wanted that communion that I saw that she had. And I set my heart, praise God, and I began one day, I received the baptism in the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues. And now, you see, I have a prayer language. Now, I do have the gift of tongues that operate sometimes. I give a message to the church in tongues, and somebody, either I or somebody else, will interpret that. They're two different kinds. The Bible says, do all speak in tongues? The answer to that is no. All are not apostles. All don't have the gift of healing, and all do not have the gift of tongues. But all who are baptized in the Holy Ghost, they all do have a prayer language. Now, the Bible talks about that, that prayer language and how important that is. Jesus said, if I don't go away, the comforter will not come. But if I depart, if I depart, it is profitable for you. It is advantageous for you that I go away so the Holy Ghost can come. And when he has come, you see, you'll have this ability to worship God in another language. The Bible says that he, that he that prays in an unknown tongue bypasses his understanding. It says, how be it in the spirit we speak mysteries to God. And when you pray in that language, 1 Corinthians 14 says, no man understands him. No man. Everybody shout, no man. No man. Shout it again. No man. Nobody, nobody's going to understand and interpret in the spirit or out of the spirit. No man understands him. Howbeit in the spirit he speaks mysteries to God. Hey, I got news for you. God can give you a language the devil cannot understand. I remember when I went to Dallas, Texas to pray for my sister Mary who was delivered by a great miracle of God from, from all kind of, uh, of uh, epileptic seizures and she's never had any more since that time. But up there, going up there, I got in my car uh, and I was all alone in my car and you know it's 240 miles from here to, to, to uh, Dallas and I prayed in tongues all the way. I had a 240 mile prayer meeting. And while I was praying in tongues, I can imagine the devil sitting on top of my car, demons in the front, demons on the back saying, what's he talking about? What's he talking about? We can't understand where he's, what's he going to do? What's he going to do? What, what, what's he talking about? Thank God we speak secrets of God. Hallelujah. Now, when the Holy Ghost comes into our lives and, and gives us that heavenly language to communicate with God, but he has, does far more than that. You think about what Jesus said. It says he'll guide you into all truth. Thank God for the Holy Ghost guiding us into the truth of the Bible. I never knew, television audience, who I was in Christ 
what right I had in the name of Jesus and what, what my victory was over the devil and all of these wonderful in Christ realities until I got the baptism in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will, will reveal those things to you. He'll guide us into all truth. The Bible says, whatever he hears from heaven, he'll relay down to us and speak to us. The Bible says he'll show us things to come. The Bible says that he will take of the things of Christ and reveal them unto us. I really never knew the riches that I had in Christ until I got the baptism in the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost began to unveil the fact that I am the righteousness of God in him. Thank God that I am holy and without blame before the Father, that I can come boldly under the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And I have boldness to enter in by the blood of Jesus. That I have power to cast out demons and resist the devil and he flees from me. Oh, it's the Holy Ghost that reveals those things. He will, he will take of the things. Of, and then also, he will begin to manifest himself through what the Bible calls the gifts of the Holy Ghost. The gift of speaking in tongues to the church. The gift of interpretation. The gift of discerning of spirits. The gift of the word of wisdom. The gift of the word of knowledge. The gift of prophecy. The gift of special faith. When God empties you of all doubt and you cannot doubt, you know it's going to happen. These are supernatural gifts. And I want to tell you folks, this is a wicked world you're living in. The answer is not, you know, all kind of psychology and all kind of psychiatry and all kind of medical uh, answers and all of those things are good. Our son's a doctor. We're not against any of those things. But I'll tell you, there is a supernatural enemy called the devil and demon forces out there. You need supernatural power. And God never intended his church to be a weak, anemic country club. He said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not be able to hold out against that church. Oh, the devil is not chasing us. We're chasing the devil. So I urge you, listen to me. Don't be ashamed of speaking in tongues. Don't be ashamed how the devil has fought this message. He knows that if he can keep you afraid of speaking in tongues and worshiping God in another language, he can keep you from the power of God in your life. Oh, how he guards this. He says, stay away, stay away. Don't get involved in that. The devil is a liar. You rebuke the devil and set your heart to let Jesus baptize you in the Holy Ghost and fire, and then you'll not only go to heaven, you'll have heaven on earth. Thank God for the baptism in the Holy Ghost. You know, I like to preach the Bible. But I like to preach all the Bible, not just part of it. So today I've discussed some things maybe are new to you. But you know, God wants you to understand, to know the truth, to be set free. You don't have to drag through life, letting the devil steal your children, steal your marriage, steal your money, steal everything you got. You, have, you can get the baptism in the Holy Ghost and fire, give your heart to Jesus, you receive the baptism in the Holy Ghost and fire, and then you will learn your authority and your ability and who you are in Christ. Oh, it's wonderful. And we want you to have that experience. If you live close to here, come on out here and we'll teach you more about it. We'll help you. And, you know, the greatest step toward the baptism in the Holy Ghost is to get born again. Because once you're born again, then you are made worthy to receive the baptism because you're cleansed and made righteous by the blood of Jesus. So today, maybe some of you have never been born again. That's the first step. The Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We want to meet you in heaven. And so today I'm going to pray a prayer. I didn't know how to pray when I got to say somebody taught me how to pray. And I followed their prayer. I want to teach, I want to lead you in prayer. So if you want Jesus to be in your heart 
you want to be a candidate for the baptism in the Holy Ghost, just pray these words. Say, oh God, I know I'm a sinner. You know I'm a sinner. But Christ died for sinners. Today, oh God, I turn my back on the way I've been living. And I open my heart. Lord Jesus, come in. I believe you're the Son of God, alive from the dead. The only way to heaven. So I give my heart to you, Jesus, to become a child of God. Oh, from this moment on, I don't belong to myself. I don't belong to the devil. I belong to Jesus. Now, Jesus, since you're my Lord, baptize me in the Holy Ghost and fire. Give me a heavenly language. Put me in a supernatural realm. And I'll thank you all the days of my life. You prayed that prayer. God heard you. We don't see you here. We'll see you in heaven.